Hello, welcome to the Rose of Sharon Ministries Bible Study. Come on in, get your pen and paper, because we're going to talk about today the bait of Satan. Before we start our Bible study, let's have our pastor, Pastor Billy Ray Washington, lead us in a word of prayer at this time. You ready, Pastor Washington? Yes, ma'am. All right, Pastor. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says men ought always to pray and not faint. God, you also said in your word that in the last days, peerless times will come for men will become lovers of themselves Jesus. rather than lovers of God. Oh, yeah. God, we thank you for giving us a mind to pause you, and Jesus. meditate on your holy word. Yes, God. Your word says that the spirit speaks expressly oh, yeah. that in the latter times, uh -huh. some shall depart oh, God. from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits mm -hmm. and doctrines of devils, oh, yeah. speaking lies of hypocrisy, the forbidding to marry, yes. commanding to oh, abstain Jesus. from meats. Jesus, Jesus. So Lord, Lord Jesus. we're in a dark day. Lord Jesus. The temptations, that great group that came out in the 60s and 70s, sang a song, Ball of Confusion. Oh God, oh God. Ball of Confusion, Ball, Ball of Confusion. Ah. They stated fear in the air. Yeah. Yes, but God, oh God, your word states that you're able to keep us from falling yeah, we only Jesus. and to present us faultless oh, yes. before the presence of your glory with the exceeding joy. Yes, Jesus. Give us a mind, give us a heart yes, Jesus. to hear what the Spirit is going to speak to us today oh, say to the church, you know? because Satan is out to deceive. Yes, yes he is. But you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly, yes, Jesus. Now, God, this series of messages, we're expecting you to heal yes, Jesus. relationships. Yes, we're Jesus. We're expecting you to heal, heal. psychological dilemmas, heal us, mental God. dilemmas. Heal us, God. We ask you to heal spiritually. In so. the name of Jesus, heal so us, So it is so. We are receiving our healing now. In the name of Jesus. Even in the prayer. Yes, Father. Now, thank you, God. Thank you. In God. Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Washington, for that wonderful, wonderful prayer. Pastor Washington and I come on every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We come here to reason together with you. And we're going to have a magnificent Bible study on today because we're going to talk about Satan, some of his tactics. You know, he come to kill, steal, and destroy. But we got the answer for you today. So sit back, relax, get your pen and paper, because we're going to open up the Word of God with you, and we're going to have a conversation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, my friend. Yes, Rosa Sharon. Praise Center Community Church. Repair the Breach Worldwide Ministries. We're going to share the Word of God today. And I hope you get something out of this lesson. And if you get something out of the lesson, Drop us a word, the bait of Satan. We know Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You have a God-given assignment here on earth. Yes, you do. Are you in a relationship? Yes. You are. You are either in a mutual loving relationship, social relationship, but you need somebody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You may have a good friend, close friend. Are you having a hard time getting out of bed lately? Are you struggling because of this pandemic? Has it pushed you in a cloud of depression? Every time you cut on the television, guess what you see? Pandemic! Pandemic! <laughs> Wear your mask. Vaccine. A new strain is out even. Because every day it's the same thing. You're looking for a break in this life. Satan, he's waving a bait in your face like he waved one in Eve's face. He says if you do this or that, things will turn out differently. But it's only a bait. Saints and friends, it's only a bait. 
to try to get you to go against the word of God. Will you take or accept the bait that would change your life forever? Think about it, saints. Don't take the bait. Again, this is the Rose Sharon Ministries, 7 o'clock p.m. Wednesday Bible Study. Yes. And we're talking about don't take the bait in crisis in your life. And you're going to have crisis. You're going to have a crisis in your relationship, your mental health, psychological health, and spiritual health. Somebody's going through right now. Now, when you say don't take the bait in relationships and concerning your psychological health, mental health, what are you talking about, lady? Don't take the bait. What bait? Sometimes Satan will put things in your mind about your partner. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll put things in your mind about your friend. Yes, okay. But don't take that bait. Now, the bait is simply this. Becoming offended. Yes. Once you become offended, you become a candidate to be doctrinized oh, by the devil. If I'm offended at my wife, then Satan is going to whisper in my ear facts first. Oh, yeah. Facts first. And yeah. then he's going to elaborate and <laughs> blow everything out, of, out proportion. of proportion. Yes, sir. As long as I am offended. Yes. Don't take the bait. Yes. And if, Pastor Washington, yes. we want to let the people know we're coming out of the book. It's John Bavir. Living Free from the Deadly Trap of Offense. Yes. This book exposes one of Satan's most deceptive snares used to pull believers out of God's will. My God. When you get offended at your leader, yes. it's hard for you to listen Amen. to him Amen. or her preach. Amen. Why? Because you are offended concerning their shortcomings. That's right, Pastor. Now, we're not saying you shouldn't care, yes. but just don't take the bait Amen. of offense. Yes. Lady Washington, I, I feel like teaching now. <laughs> can, I, can I go, go ahead, get, Pastor? Okay, go ahead, go, Pastor. Go. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited, too. That's all right. <laughs> now, the very first time that you heard about Satan uh -huh. in the book of Genesis, yes. it states, what does it state, Lady Washington? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So you see, the devil is a cunning, he's cunning, nasty, he's cunning. slimy, Amen. and he's more subtle, the Bible said, yes. than any beast. You cannot handle him outside of God's word. Oh, yeah. Now, his sole purpose was to bait humanity mm -hmm. into endorsing him as the new God Listen, saints. of this world. Yes. And of course, he succeeded. Yes, he did. Now, don't take my word for it when I say he succeeded. He's the God of this world. The Bible you, say that. Yeah. You read it in 2 Corinthians, mm -hmm. the fourth chapter, verses 3 through 4. It talks about Satan is, not was, but is the God of this world. Yes, Pastor. Consequently, the effects of are as follows. Oh, yes, Jesus. Lady Washington was talking about it in the introduction. A strained relationship between Adam and Eve or marriages, marriages in, in general. general. Amen, Pastor. Now, that's Genesis, the third <laughs> chapter, verses 12 through 16. God said, Adam, where are you? Oh, yeah. What did he say? That woman you gave me. <laughs> they start blaming each yeah, other. Blame it on the woman. <laughs> so, Eve took the bait. Yes, she did. It messed with her marriage. And society. Wait a minute. It filtered down yeah. to their children, yes, Cain and Abel, because uh -huh. Cain slew Abel. Uh -huh. And afterward, it eventually filtered down to... Social unrest. Yes. Amen, Pastor. And you read that. In Genesis, the third chapter, 14. All right, now the 14 verse is after Cain had slew Abel. Uh huh. Now there's social unrest. He said, God, because I've killed my brother, yes. whoever finds me is going to want to kill me. Yes, Jesus. And then by the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, there was complete chaos Ooh. all through the world. Yes, Jesus. Verses five and six, the Bible said the heart of man was only continually evil. Mm hmm. Always. Oh, yeah. And God said, well, I'm going to have to put a stop to this mess. And he built, go, told Noah to build an ark. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I've just jumped all in this conversation. No, go ahead and bring it out, Pastor. We want to wet your whistle. <laughs> okay. We want you to understand what this book is about, and we want to get into this book, and we're going to dissect it, Pastor. Yes, yes. We're going to take it apart. Okay, so read that topic, Lady Washington. Eve took the bait, but now it's our time. See, we can't go back and undo what Eve did. That's right. Uh, that's right, Pastor. Uh -huh. But we can capitalize on our time. Yes. So this teaching is generally influenced from the book entitled The Bait of Satan, uh -huh. a bestseller written by John Bevere. Your response to offenses ultimately determine your future. Okay, Pastor Watch, before you get started, let me read about what some of the offenses are. Types of offenses. Okay. Bitterness. Okay. Strive, mm -hmm. unforgiveness, mm -hmm. envy, anger, and resentment. Now go ahead, Pastor. Girl, you talking. <laughs> you know, anger leads to murder. Yeah. Just like lust leads to adultery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, here we go. It's not the offense itself, but your response. Yeah, how are you responding? That's yeah. right, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the Bible before we get started. The Bible said, be ye angry, but sin not. You can get angry over a situation. Yes. But don't mean you go ahead and kill a person. You don't do that. It says, and let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh, yes. Yes. I just want to say that bit. Go ahead, Pastor. All right. That's fine. Furthermore, John puts offended people into two categories. Okay. Now, listen real close. Okay. Here are the two categories. Those who had truly been wronged. By someone? Think about the saints. You know, it, it really happened. It really, really happened that way. Uh -huh. And then the other category is those whose mistreatment is only imagined. Think about the saints. You just only imagine that was that bad. Yes. yes. With your spouse or mm -hmm. another person. Sometimes it's best to repeat what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes your ear gate is not hearing what is being said. All right. Now, here's the deal. Neither one can keep you from your God-given purpose. In other words, if you had been mistreated, it's not going to keep you from your God-given purpose, but your response will determine oh, your future. My God. That's why, Lady Washington, must we mustn't take the bait. We mustn't take the bait. Oh, Jesus. Now, let's discuss the bait. Now, the bait is the deadly trap of holding on to an offense. Period. You hear me say it? Holding on. Yes, yes. Sometimes you got to need to let it go. Yes. Amen. Go ahead. Yes. I'm, amen. Somebody said amen and women. <laughs> All right, here we go. We have no right not to forgive. Mm. And this caused the disciples to cry out one day, Lord, increase our faith. Oh, increase our faith. Now, now, now check this out, Lady Washington. <clears throat> when they saw the miracles... They didn't make that cry. Uh huh. When they saw Lazarus raised from the dead, they didn't make that cry. All right, Pastor. When they saw him calm the raging Ooh, sea, yes, they didn't yes, make yes. that cry. Uh huh. But when he gave the simple command to forgive those who have wronged you, oh, they cried out, Lord, increase, our increase faith. my faith. Oh, God. But Jesus said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal it doesn't take faith. It just takes believing the word of God yes. and obeying God. I'm going to say this and we're going to move on. Peter asked Jesus in Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 3 to 5. Lord, how often shall I, uh, you know, forgive my brother? Seven times. That's what the law says. Seven <laughs> times. Jesus said, well, verily I say unto you, yeah, he until 70 <laughs> times. times 70. Yeah. And when they heard that, they mm. all cried out, Lord. Increase oh, our faith. Yes, Jesus. Okay. Amen, Pastor. Okay, don't take the bait. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about in this, in, the, in this series, relationships, psychological health, okay, spiritual health, and mental health. All right. And I'm Lady Joanne Washington, and this is Pastor Billy Washington. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about this book, don't take the baby. We're going to dissect it. Oh, yes. As I said once before. Right. Now, you might even think, me offended? Yes, you. 
Sometimes we don't even believe with our own eyes and our own ears and ears. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are the problem. We are offended. Yes. But Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 1 says, it is impossible. Possible that no offenses should come. Think about it, Pastor. In other words, there's always going to be a fool in the crowd yes. that's going to get on your nerves. It's impossible yes. for you to never be offended. Impossible. So don't trick yourself. Oh, yeah. You can be You're offended. You're going to travel that road. You're going to yes. travel that road offense. Oh, yes. So just get ready for it, Saints and Friends. Oh, yes. John Bevere says, I travel across the United States ministering. I have been able to observe one of the enemies most deadly and deceptive traps. Mm -hmm. It imprisons countless Christians. Lord help us. It imprisons them. Mm -hmm. Severe is severs relationship. Okay. And widens the existing breaches between us. Okay. It is a trap of offense. My God. Many are unable to function properly in their calling. Because of the wounds and the hurts that offenses have caused in their lives. They are handicapped and hindered from fulfilling their full potential. Most often, it is a fellow believer who has hurt them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A that fellow friend, believer. That friend. My prayer partner? Yeah. Oh, God. The one we go to the house of the Lord together with. Oh, you playing with me. No. Okay, well, let's keep going. Let's see. This let's causes see. offenses to feel like betrayal. In the bait of Satan, Psalm 55, 12 through 14. Take your time and read David this, laments, for it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bury it, nor it is one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could have hid from him. Okay. But it was you. Oh, God. A man, my equal, my friend, my companion, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throne. Mm -hmm. They are those who we sit and sing alongside of. Or perhaps it is the one who is delivering the sermon. We spend holidays with, attend social functions, mm -hmm. share offices with them. Or perhaps it's, it's even closer. We, grow, we grew up with them or yes. we grew up with them. We confided in him. We slept next to him. We told him all our secrets. Okay. The closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. This is why I get angry at my wife sometimes. Because I love her so dear and she's so close to me. Yeah. But the closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. If I take the bait. bait. Amen. Go ahead. You find the greatest hatred among people. Who were once close. Okay. Attorneys will tell you the most vicious cases are in the divorce courts. My God. Mm. The American media constantly report murders in homes by desperate family members. You know, Pastor, I just heard on this week a 15-year-old uh, person killed their mother. My Let me God. keep reading it. Let me keep reading. Okay. The home meant to be a shelter of uh, protection, provision, and growth where we learn to give mm -hmm. and receive love yes. is often the very root of our pain. And this is why we need healing. Yes, Jesus. History shows that the bloodiest wars are civil, brother against brother. We lost about 600,000 men in the Civil War. Oh, That's Jesus. more men than we lost in World War One, World War Two, Iraq, Afghanistan. It was the Civil War. Oh, yeah. The North against the South. And guess what? The Democrats and Republicans are engaged in battle oh, right Jesus. now. Go ahead, lady. Oh, yes, Jesus. Let me, let me just turn to the next page here. The possibility for offenses are endless as a list of relationships no matter how complex or simple, the truth remains. Only those you care about can hurt you. My God. I like God. that. My God. Cause that, I that's a true statement. I don't care about you. I don't care, I don't care what you do. What you did. Don't off, hurt me. Like water off a duck's back. But I know you're right. But if I love you. And I care about you. My God. You can hurt me. Don't kiss me if you don't love me, Amen. Lady Washington. Amen, Pastor. Oh, yeah. You expect more from them after all. You've given more of yourself to them. Mm -hmm. 
The higher the expectation, the, the greater, greater the, the fall. fall. Selfishness reigns in our society. Men and women today look out for themselves to the neglect and hurt of those around them. Yes. This should not surprise us. The Bible is very clear that in the last day, men will be lovers of themselves. Second Timothy 3 and 2. Yes. If I can't be reelected, I'll start a civil war. Oh, God. Because I'm in love with myself. We expect this in unbelievers, but Paul was not referring to those outside the church. He was talking about those within it. Many are wounded, hurt, and bitter. They are offended, but they do not realize they are falling into Satan's trap. It's a trap. Yes. It's a trap. Yes, it is. Is it our fault? Jesus made it very clear that it is impossible to live in this world and not have the opportunity to become offended. Yes. Yet most believers are shocked, bewildered, and amazed when it happens. We believe we are only the ones who have been wrong. You know what? Nobody been wrong but me. Yes, yes. But don't be deceived. Others have been also. This response leaves us vulnerable to a root of bitterness. Bitterness. Lady Washington, because you got me a little depressed here. What about the cure? Okay, Pastor. The book of Revelation, Jesus addresses the church of Lady Dosia by first telling them, how they saw themselves as rich, wealthy, and having need of nothing. Mm -hmm. Then exposing their true condition. <laughs> they were wretched, miserable, miserable poor, poor, blind, blind and, and naked. naked. You can find that in Revelation, the third chapter, 14 through the 20 verses. Many are this way today. Jesus told the lady... Laodiceans, how to get out of their deception. deception. Buy God's gold and see their true condition. Buy God's gold. Jesus' first instructions for breaking free from deception was to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Oh, yes. Refined gold, if it's refined now, soft, it's soft, it's pliable, pliable free, free from, from corrosion, corrosion, or other substances. And when gold is mixed with other metals, you well, have copper, iron, nickel, and so on. It becomes hard and less uh -huh. pliable. Amen. So, in other words, thing. yeah, this more is corrosive. That, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, God going to tell us how to get out of this mess. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Lady Washington. This mixture is called an alloy. Yes. The higher the percentage of foreign metals, mm -hmm. the harder the gold becomes. Yeah, see, hatred, mm -hmm. envy, and strife, that should be foreign to you. Yes. And when it gets in your heart, you become hard. Hard. Said, I'll never love again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Lady mm -hmm. Washington. Conversely, the lower the percentage of alloy, the softer and more flexible. Immediately we see, immediately we see the parallel. Mm -hmm. A pure heart is like pure gold. All right. Soft, tender, and pliable. But how do I get it that way? Keep reading. Hebrews 3 and 13 states that hearts are hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. If we do not deal with an offense, saints, it will produce more fruit of sin, such as bitterness, anger, and resentment. Oh, God. This added substance hardens our hearts, just as alloy hardened gold. Mm -hmm. This reduces our removed tenderness, creating loss of sensitivity. In other words, your heart gets hard. Yes, yes. We are hindered in our ability to hear God's voice. You can't even hear God's voice. The Bible said, in the book of Hebrews, the day that you hear my voice, heart heart not, not your heart. heart. But if I'm offended, mm -hmm. my heart is cannot hardly hear God. It's not that I can't hear God, but I'm listening to so many other voices. Yes, so many other voices. That's the right, voice Pastor. of my feelings, yes. the voice of my flesh, the yes. voice of Satan, the voice of my conscience that has been corrupted because of the offense. Go ahead, Lady Our Russell. accuracy to see is darkened. Okay. Like blinders come over your eyes. Okay. This is a perfect setting for deception. The first step is refining gold, is grinding it into a powder and making it, mixing it with, with a substance called blocks. Okay. Then the mixture is placed in a furnace 
and melted by intense heat. Mm -hmm. The alloys and impurities are drawn to the flux mm -hmm. and rise to the surface. Mm -hmm. The gold, which is heavier, remains at the bottom. Talk to us, lady. The impurities of droughts, such as copper, iron, and zinc, combined with flux, is then removed, yielding a pure metal. So that person that's in your life that's getting on your nerves, you thought they were there to nourish you, but they're in your life to refine Ooh, you. Jesus. In other words, they're going to bring out the worst in oh, you. Yeah. But once you discover the worst, repent. That's why the Bible says all things work together good and then they love the Lord. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. It refines It'll you. It'll work together good because you'll be refined. You'll oh, learn yes. From that mistake. You know, when Judas betrayed Jesus oh, with a kiss, yes. Jesus said, my friend. He didn't get offended mm -hmm. because he needed Judas to betray him so that he could participate in the death, the burial, and resurrection. What are you saying, Brother Washington? I'm saying all things oh, yes, Jesus. work together for good to them that love the Lord, to those that are called according to his purpose. Now, everything I read, now look at what God says. Behold, I have refined you. But not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Isaiah 48 and 10. Okay. And again, in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Yes, yes. That the genuineness of your faith, ooh, Jesus, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God is allowing those afflictions to come upon you. To refine you, to test you. Yes. To bring out the best part of you. And that's the most precious because only what you do for Christ. Go last. Yes. Amen. First Peter 1, 6-7 emphasizes added God refines with affliction. Trials. Tribulation. And the heat which separates impurities such as unforgiveness, strife, mm -hmm. bitterness, yes. anger, envy, and so forth from the character of God in our lives. Sin easily hides where there is no heat or trials and afflictions. Yes. Let me read that again. Let me say that again, Pastor. All right. Sin easily hides where there is no heat. Are trials and affliction. Okay, so the trials are necessary. It's necessary. In times of prosperity and success, even a wicked man would seem kind and generous. Under the heat of trials, however, the impurities surface. Okay. It's surface. Okay. It's come to the top. Yes. The impurities surface. There was a time in my life when I went through intense trials such as I have never faced before. I became rude, harsh with those closest to me. My family and friends began to avoid me. This is Jumbo Beer. So if, you take, the bait, if mm -hmm. you take the bait, you can run off those that you need most. The people that love you, uh-huh. Yes. I cried out to the Lord, where is all this anger coming from? It wasn't here before. The Lord responded, Son, it is when they liquefy gold and fire that the impurities show up. And then ask the question that changed my life. Can you see the impurities in gold before it is put in the fire? Well, no, I can't see it. Not, but, not until it's melted. Go ahead. But that doesn't mean they were not there, he said. Okay. When the fire of trials hits you, these impurities surface. Okay. Though hidden to you, they were always visible to me. Okay. So now you have a choice that will determine your future. You can remain angry. Okay. Blaming your wife. Friends. Pastor. And the people you work with. Or you can see this dross of sin for what it is and, and repent. repent. Receive forgiveness. And I will take my ladle and remove these impurities from your life. Oh, God. Now, this book is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. See your true condition. We're going to close with this. We want The issue is, 
We want to see our true conditions so that we can give it into the hands of the Lord. Because sometimes when we're offended, we don't know we're offended, Pastor. Yes. We didn't know that we're offended. This oh, is yeah. why we feel when a person walk in the room, they make you change your whole personality. Right. Yes. That's not like you. My God. And people be saying, why is she acting like that? Oh, yes. Because you're offended with that person. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pastor. Well, let's go with it. See your true condition. Jesus said our ability to see correctly is another key of being freed mm -hmm. from deception. Often when we are offended, we see ourselves as victims and blame those who hurt us. Yes. We justify our bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, envy, and resentment as they surface. Sometimes we even resent those who remind us or who have hurt us. Yeah. For this reason, Jesus counseled, anoint thy eyes. We're in the book of Revelation 3 uh -huh. and 18. Uh -huh. Anoint thy eyes with eyes salve that ye may see. Go ahead, lady. Revelation 3 and 18. See what? Your true condition. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can be zealous and repent as Jesus commanded next. You would only repent when you stop blaming other people. All right. When we blame others and defend our own position, we are blind. We struggle to remove the speck out of our brother's eyes while there is a log in ours. It is the revelation of truth that brings freedom to us. When the Spirit of God shows us our sins, the bait of Satan, ten, he always does it in such a way that it seems separate from us. All right. This brings conviction, not condemnation. It is my prayer that you, as you read this book, God's word would enlighten the eyes of your understanding. Yes. Oh, yes. That you will see your true condition and become free from any offense. Yes. You are harboring. Don't let pride keep you from seeing and repenting. Oh, yes. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to make her out of Satan. Let us say what Satan does, but I'm going to say what God does. Okay. And this is why you know it's the bait of Satan. Oh, when you do what Satan says, dude, you're uh -huh. taking his bait. Yeah. Okay, but I'm going to tell you what God does. Okay. All right. God steals you. But Satan, he always rushes you. God reassures you. But Satan always try to frighten you. God leads you. But Satan always pushes you. God enlightens you. But Satan always try to bring confusion in you. God forgives you. But Satan condemns you. God calms you. But Satan try to stress you out. God encourages you. But Satan discourages you. God comforts you. But Satan want to bring you into weary. And the Bible says that a broken spirit will dry your bones. Oh, yes, you want to be healed Jesus. this year? The Bible said the jar of the Lord is our strength. Yes, Jesus. Thank you so, 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 so very much for receiving this message today. This is the series just getting started. Now, I bought... This is just the beginning, Pastor, too. Let them know. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This we, is just to whet your appetite. <laughs> yes, yes. We, Get you ready for the book. Yes. But this is The Bait, bait of, of Satan. Satan in 2021. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm, this is Pastor Billy Washington, and I'm Lady Joanne Washington. And bait. we thank you for listening today. Now, if you would like to receive salvation, there, there are five steps that you may want to read here and can help you. First one, we want to repent, we want to confess, we want to believe, we want to connect, and we want to pursue. Yes. And this is what you want to do. So, Pastor, will you have an ending prayer for us at this time? Lord, in the name yes, Jesus. of Jesus Christ, you said... If we confess our sins, yeah. you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, God, no one can keep me from my purpose but me. Oh, yes, Jesus. And you said in the book of James, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Oh, yeah. God, I refuse to go down hating my brother. Amen. I refuse to go down in bitter. I refuse to be deceived by Satan that you are not the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, if I'm sick, mm. I hope to be healed. Yes, Jesus. If I'm down, I hope to be lifted up. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you're able. You're so able, Father. Help us to realize that we're Lord, our own worst enemies. Yes, Jesus. So help us, oh God, to walk help in us. love. Help us, Father. Walk in love. As never before. Yes, Father. 
We thank you for healing our audience thank as they're listening. We thank you for their faithfulness. Oh, yes. Thank you in for healing In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for we three churches in one location. Rose and Sharon Ministry, Pastor Billy and Lady Joanne Washington. Praise Center to Community Church with our Bishop, Bishop Donald H. and Dr. Yolanda Butler. Yes. And also we have the Repair of the Breach Worldwide Ministries with Pastor Rana and Lady Sanithia Walker. Three oh, yes. churches, one, one location. location. Thanks for joining us. Come back next Wednesday at 7 o'clock on the dot. Like and share this because someone needs this message. God Amen. bless you until we meet again next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Not all